My name is John Welch. I'm a nature photographer. Usually I'm exploring and photographing my home in the wilds of New England. But the winters, they can really drag on. Okay, we got nearly two feet of snow. I had 21 inches at the stake. This is the van. That is the focus. What would happen if I packed up the family and drove us 1,400 miles south to Florida to find new trails and wildlife? This is Wild Florida Through New England's Eyes. The past two weeks, I've been in Florida. Many people think that Florida has only Disney World or urban sprawl. But believe it or not, there's a lot of wildlife and wild lands here in Florida. This week's video is going to show you a little bit of what I found. It seemed that birds were everywhere in Florida. Florida has about 550 different species recorded, which according to eBird, makes it the sixth most biodiverse state for birds in the United States. I got to see so many species while I was there. I went in March, and it was nesting season for great egrets, wood storks, and the colorful roseate spoonbills. Some chicks had already hatched. Of course, this abundance of birds meant there were plenty of prey for predators. This bald eagle put on a real show for me. I watched it fly off this tree. At first I thought I'd spooked it, but as it flew out into the wetlands, I realized it was hunting. It made several passes. Raptors weren't the only predators. Florida is home to about 1.3 million alligators, second in the U.S. only to Louisiana, which has 2 million. I got to encounter lots of alligators this year. I got some cool shots. I even got to see uh, alligators eating turtles. Many of my relatives and friends think I'm going to get killed by an alligator. Well, I guess they can be aggressive and dangerous if you're not careful, but my experience is they're pretty docile.
With that said, there are about six alligator attacks per year on people in Florida, most of which occur right along the edge of water or in the water, so be aware. There are several bird species in Florida that really only occur in Florida in the United States. One of them that I focused on photographing and finding this year was the snail kite. This is a raptor that focuses eating primarily something called apple snails. It's endangered in Florida, and I was able to find them this year. Being from New England, we were excited to see this species for the first time. Snail kites primarily live in South and Central America, but they also have a small population in Florida. Snail kites were on the brink of extinction in Florida. By 1972, the population was only 65 in the state. But the arrival of an invasive species may have helped save them. The island apple snail is a non-native species from the Caribbean that was introduced to Florida's wetlands as a result of the aquarium industry and began to spread prolifically. This abundant food source has helped snail kites. The snail kites already have several physical features that make them well adapted to eating snails, such as longer legs and feet to swoop down and grab them, and a long hooked bill to reach in and get the meat. The new invasive island apple snail is bigger than the native Florida apple snail and requires a bigger beak to reach inside. It was interesting to watch these snail kites twist their necks 180 degrees in a way that would break a human's neck to reach in and eat the snails. Apparently, in just a decade, the length of the bill of the snail kites has already increased as those with genes for longer bills have passed them down. The population of snail kites in Florida has increased, and the most recent 2022 count has the population in Florida back to about 3,000. We were happy to find this rare species and be able to appreciate their story. Florida not only has unique species, but it is also unique because of how tolerant its birds are. This makes it possible to get close shots without disturbing the wildlife. For example, great blue herons will usually take off as soon as they see you back home in New England. Though I have taken a few great blue heron shots from home that I was happy with, they're usually from farther back, and I needed something more dramatic to be happening with its environment or behavior. In Florida, people were walking right by great blue herons, and they weren't even moving. This gave me the chance to finally get some close-up portraits and observe what they are eating up close. What even is that huge thing? Salamander? Snake? Both? Another species I was hoping to find that I knew was more tolerant in Florida is the barred owl. Usually when I photograph them in New England, it's between the months of January and April when there are no leaves on the trees, and there is a lot of white sky in the background that I find distracting. I wanted to get barred owls with better backgrounds. Florida would be just the place to accomplish that, with its lush forests draped in Spanish moss. I spent several early mornings trying to find them, at first with no luck. And then it happened. I found a barred owl on my way to finding the snail kites one morning. What a surprise. I was able to capture these photos in that perfect Florida habitat. Though the birds are more tame in Florida, they are still wild. And there was one more species unique to Florida that I was hoping to capture. For many, the sound of sandhill cranes migrating through the March skies is the sound of the coming of spring.
In Florida, their chicks are already hatching. Florida actually has its own unique subspecies called the Florida Sandhill Crane. The population of this subspecies is between four and 5,000, and they live in Florida year-round and do not migrate. There are about 500,000 greater sandhill cranes across North America. About 25,000 of those join the Florida sandhill crane in winter in Florida. Though slightly smaller than the greater sandhill crane, Florida sandhill cranes are still tall birds, standing nearly four feet high with a wingspan of six feet. This subspecies is also more tolerant to humans. Many Floridians see them walking around their neighborhoods. Visiting in March, I was able to experience breeding season for the first time. Between February and April, Florida sandhill cranes build nests in floating mats of vegetation in shallow water. After incubating for about 30 days, the chicks hatch and grow quickly. Chicks can leave the nest after 24 hours and join their parents to forage for ants and other insects. In New England, we are not on the flyway for greater sandhill cranes. The sighting of a single bird that's off course is enough to make birders stop what they're doing and drive across the state. That is why we were really appreciative of being able to see sandhill cranes every day while we were in Florida. You probably have heard of the 2200 mile Appalachian Trail, but did you know that Florida has a similar long national scenic trail? The orange blazed 1500 mile Florida Trail runs across the whole state in the south from Big Cypress National Preserve to the north in the Panhandle. One of the surprising things is that even though the land seems all the same from a plane or driving around in a town in Florida, when you get out into the wilds, you'll realize that there's a few distinct ecosystems that are quite beautiful. The Florida Trail crosses a broad range of Florida's habitats, including longleaf pine forests, hardwood forests with southern live oaks, cypress swamps, scrub habitat, and prairies. Although Florida is rapidly developing and has nearly 1,000 people moving there a day, you might be surprised to learn that 28% of the land in Florida is conserved. There are some great efforts to increase this amount and keep pieces of land intact, such as the Florida Wildlife Corridor Foundation, which was instrumental in getting unanimous bipartisan legislation passed in 2021 to help keep more of Florida's wild land intact in a connected, unfragmented corridor. Being from New England, Florida's land and wildlife were new to us and filled us with wonder. I hope this video has shown you what is unique about the wild side of Florida and convinced you that there is value in preserving it. Check out the links in the description below to learn more about conservation organizations and efforts in Florida.